watching your snakes eat might be the most exciting part of being a snake owner. But what happens if they don't? If your snake isn't eating, that can be very stressful. So today, let's go over the top five ways to get your snake to eat every time. My name's Adam. This is a bucket full of rats. We're gonna feed some snakes today. Stick around. Having a snake that won't eat has to be the most stressful thing or one of that you can deal with as a snake owner. So what do you do? Well, rule number one, this isn't part of the list, but just why I have diamond and not a snake. If you have a bucket full of rodents thawing like I do, don't handle your snake. Because if your snake likes to eat, it's gonna try to eat your hand and that's no fun. Hold on, before we move on to the list, Make sure your temperatures are right, your humidity is right, you have hides on both sides. Make sure you watch care guides and your snake is actually happy and healthy. And make sure that you have the right size feeder item. The feeder item should be no larger or, let's be honest here, maybe a little bit larger than the thickest part of the snake. Got all that? All right, let's move on to the list. Number five, warmth. Very simple, very easy, just warm it up. Now this only works with certain species. Most of the time this works with species who have heat pits, right? Labial heat pits. So things like ball pythons, perfect example, right? Most pythons, in fact. And some species of boa, there are outliers, but mostly pythons. And what these do is they seek heat. So they're looking for something that is of temperature of their prey item, which could be your hand, by the way. But a lot of the times, people will feed frozen thawed. And this, again, is not part of the list, but in my opinion, always feed frozen thawed. If you're doing this, it's going to come out of the bucket cold, basically. And the idea here, put all your rodents into a bucket, put lukewarm water on it for an hour, two hours, however long it takes, depending on how many rodents you have, and then they're thawed and they're good to serve. A lot of people will dry them off, but in the case of ball pythons, I warm them up. So I run them under hot water. And when I say hot, I mean that if you take a gun, one of these bad boys right here, and you probe it, it's going to read that's probably really annoying. It's going to read right around 90 degrees, okay? Somewhere around there because that's the temperature that a mouse is going to be. It can be a little bit cooler. I'm not going exactly for what a mouse temperature is, but around that temperature so that it's not cool enough that it, they don't think it's a real thing and it's not warm enough that it's gonna burn them on the inside. So very easy. Let's move on from it to number four, movement. Now this works with all species in my experience. And of course this doesn't work every time, but if, especially if your animal likes to eat live. Do it live! So there's certain type uh, of king snakes, which is kind of weird because king snakes are usually really good feeders, but certain types of king snakes and other colubrids and especially ball pythons that like to eat live, mostly eat live. And the issue with this, and this is why I always preach frozen thawed, is if you feed live, well, first of all, it's a safety hazard. If that animal bites your animal, it's gonna be bad news. Uh, maybe it won't kill them or injure them to the point of infection, but why would you want your animal to be bitten if it doesn't have to be bitten? And all these people now, I see this as like a new thing where people are saying, well, in the wild and give them, it's enrichment for them to hunt. It's no, okay, maybe it is. Maybe they like hunting their own food, but it's not worth the risk. And I don't know where you live, but here it's 350 bucks to walk into an exotic vet. So no thank you. Reason number two, very simply, it's just a pain. <laughs> I mean, if you can get a guy to come to your house, I'm very lucky that I've got a guy who breeds in his basement and delivers to me because I put in big orders. Uh, just put them in the freezer. I got a freezer right outside the office here. They, I put them in there, you know, buy two, 300 rats at a time. I'm good for a month or two because I've got a larger collection. But for you, maybe just buy 10 rats. If you got one ball python, you're good for 10 weeks. And here's why movement's important. If you're trying to fool your snake to get from live to frozen, which could be part of the issue, uh, just move it around, make it warm, move it around. And, and a lot of the times the snake will think that it is a live prey item. It looks kind of stupid, but you take it on the end of your tongs and you always want to use tongs. If you use your hand, some people have no problem with this, but a lot of the times you will, and the snake is going to miss and it's going to bite your hand or somewhere else, use these long forceps and you should be a-okay and not have issues with this. Speaking of eating, is he, is he eyeing up my ear? Do not eat my ear. All right, so you've warmed up your feeder to about 90 degrees, somewhere around there. You're moving it around, you're wiggling it around to make it look like a live prey item, and your snake's still not interested. Now what? Number three, change the feeder item. Now I always suggest rodents, and frozen thawed rodents at that, 
because they're easy. They're usually safe, they're very easily bred in captivity, and there are certain species, you guys know I'm a western hognose guy, and getting them to feed when they're babies is really difficult sometimes, and just in general, sometimes it's hard to get them to feed, because in the wild they're gonna eat things like toads and frogs. Now I have toads now. Did I get them so I could scent feeders? No, but they work, and we'll get to scenting in a bit. But first, just change the prey item. A lot of the times, ball python breeders in particular, for whatever reason, will start their ball pythons on mice. And they're gonna need to eat rats when they're older, when they're adults. So I always say, start them on rats first. And the reason is because a mouse and a rat, they taste totally different. Taste? Smell. Well, I guess they probably taste different too, I've never tried. But, and this may seem like, well, they're both rodents, what's the difference? Mice and rats, although they look the same to you and me, they're a different species, they're not the same thing. And a ball python knows it, and other species of snake know it as well. So once they get that scent of a mouse, sometimes it's hard to switch them onto a rat. And a lot of people say African soft furs are even easier to switch onto. So just try a different feeder. So if you wanna feed rats, because your ball python is getting up to the age, or the size that they're gonna need to eat rats rather than mice, well, start feeding them rats instead. Or if they don't eat rats, try mice or try African soft furs. There are other ways to do it as well we're gonna cover in the list, but just one of the simplest ways is to try a different feeder item. And I always suggest, do your best, try for rodents, always frozen thawed, but that's, yes, buy something else. Number three, four, and five are less involved, and number two and one, they're a little bit more, well, there's a little bit more to them, so let's just get right to it. Number two, confined space, or what was told to me as the Ziploc method. And the reason is you take like a Ziploc container or something small, and you put your snake in it with the feeder item. And the reason you do this is because now your snake is in a space where all they can do is smell and touch that food item. So eventually they're going to have to eat it or they're going to continue to ignore it and we'll move on to what to do after that. But this works a lot of the time. So for example, take this little tiny hognose snake, you stick it into this little tiny space with its feeder item and you leave it overnight on your snake rack or wherever, just a place where it's a nice temperature that it doesn't drop too low. If you have a night drop, just keep it a little bit warmer so that it's active, right? Of course, ectotherm snakes, um, they're gonna be a little bit more sluggish when it's cooler. So keep the temperature up like it would be normally in the day and see if they feed, right? Leave them overnight in a dark space. Leave them undisturbed. Don't even walk by, just leave them completely undisturbed. So the only thing that can they can possibly do is slither around and be touching that food item because eventually they're gonna figure out, well, I gotta eat this thing or or they won't, but most of the time they'll realize this thing is food. This thing is in here for a reason. It's not a predator, so it must be food. It's either a predator or it's food or it's an inanimate object, but if it smells the way they want it to smell, eventually they're gonna eat it. So confined space or Ziploc method, it's, it works a lot. You'd be very surprised, give it a try. Number one, scenting. Now, this might seem like the first thing you should do. And we'll, we'll expand this, scenting and braining. And here's the difference. So to brain a pinky is something that you'll hear a lot. If you're looking into this, if you're researching how to get your snake to eat, a lot of the times they'll take a pinky mouse, which is this size, right? And they're going to cut it, kind of cut the head open so that the scent of the brain uh, is, well, it's very scenty, it's very smelly, right? It's very potent. And a lot of the times this will get a snake to eat. Now there's new research that says that this doesn't work, I've used this method, it works for me, so, I mean, whatever, let scientists be scientists. I almost sound like I don't believe in science. Listen to science, but also anecdotally, this works for me. So you can try this, but further to that, if you can make it smell like something else, and by it I mean the feeder. So, and this works with every size. A lot of the times it's babies that don't eat, so if you wanna use a pinky mouse or an adult mouse, or you wanna use a weaned rat or a pup rat or a medium-sized rat, it's always important to make sure you've got the right feeder size, the correct feeder size. Make it smell like something else. So if you've got toads also, like I do, and you have an animal like garter snakes or uh, western hognose snakes or something that eats toads in the wild or will eat toads in the wild, make it smell like a toad. Rub it on the toad. I always suggest making sure that you have a captive bred toad so it doesn't have something that you're gonna pass onto the feeder that you're then gonna pass onto your snake. But this is a very simple thing to do. So do that or what works a lot of the times with hognose snakes, and I'm sure it works with other colubrids too, I've seen it, but in my experience, I know, tuna. <laughs> it seems so silly. Open a can of tuna, drain the tuna juice into a container, put the pinkies in there, eat the tuna while you wait. 
that's it. You could even stab a couple holes in the pinky. That's so morbid. But you could just to let the tuna juice sink in. Another thing is, is eggs. You could literally take a chicken egg, scramble it up like you're about to make an omelet, and dip the feeder mouse into that. And then don't eat the egg after that. Toss the egg or feed it or cook it up and feed it to your skink. Irwin loves scrambled eggs, whatever. But you can do that. So it's very simple. And no matter what you do, it's very simple in order to, to do the scenting because all you literally do is you rub it, the food item with something else that the snake would like. And this is, for example, you know, vine snakes. It's almost impossible. Or people say it's almost impossible to get them onto to rodents. I know people who have done it through scenting. So you do is you scent and you scent and you scent and then you try one without scent and then see if it takes it. And a lot of the times it will. So there you go. Those are the five ways you can get your stubborn snake who was on a food strike or a hunger strike to finally eat. What do you think? Is there certain methods that I shouldn't have put in or I should have or I forgot about? What works for you? At the end of the day, we're all trying to learn about snakes and reptiles together. So throw your advice down there. I'd really appreciate it. And this idea came from one of you, a viewer, who threw it down in the comments section, and that's where I get all the ideas. So if you want to see your idea become a video, throw it on down there. And a special shout out to the people who helped me pay for the big rat orders that I was talking about, the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking awesome. You get to watch videos early, I post behind the scenes stuff, a whole bunch of stuff. For as little as a dollar a month, you can become a patron too. Diamond and I would appreciate it. I think, I think he's sleeping. And uh, that's it. I think I've plugged everything. Hit subscribe. See you on Thursday.